Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're starting a new playlist, and the playlist deals with solving equations with radicals. So first we need to understand what we mean by solving equations. We've seen this before somewhere, but essentially when we solve equations, we're trying to find the value or values, it could be one on one, of the variable, in this case we're using the variable x, that satisfy the equation. Now, satisfying the equation means that when you plug that solution back into the original equation, that the left side will equal the right side. That's what we mean by satisfying the equation. The general approach to doing that when there's radicals in the equation is that we try to separate the radicals on one side and all the non-radicals on the other side and then square both sides. So essentially, when a equals b, we can then say that a squared must equal b squared. That is, of course, the same. Now, when we do that, sometimes we may introduce extra variables that do not satisfy the original equation, or extra solutions, I should say, that do not satisfy the original equation. So therefore, we should always check to make sure that the answer is valid when we do that. So here, we're simply going to show you the general approach. For something like this, it's straightforward. We're simply going to square both sides. So in other words, we're going to square the left side, and we're going to square the right side just like that. And this becomes the square root of x squared is simply x equals 49. And then when we plug that 49 back in the original equation, well, we should get the correct valid answer. We do the same over here. We're going to square both sides. So in this case, when we square the left side, so let me write it like this, x squared plus 1 in this radical. So when we go ahead and square that, that's the same as squaring the right side. Notice when we do that on the left side, we get x squared plus 1 equals, on the right side, we get x squared. Now notice that seems kind of odd, and the only way that that can be true if x is equal to 0. Well, no, if x is equal to 0, that's not even true either. Matter of fact, it can't be true, so this particular one has no solution. And you can right away see that sometimes, when we go through the process, we don't find the solution. And that is, of course, possible as well. And then when we get something like this, notice we have a number here, we have a radical, we have a radical. How do we, do the, how do we deal with that? Well, in this case, what we could do is we could simply square both sides like we do before. And if we do that, let's see what happens. So we square the left side and we square the right side. On the left side, we end up with x minus 1 equals on the right side. Notice we have a binomial squared is the first term squared, so it's 25 times x plus 9, plus twice the product of the two, 5 times 4 is 20, times 2, that would be 40, times the square root of x plus 9, and then on the right, on the right we also have a plus 16. Notice we have just one radical left. Typically when you do this, we end up with one radical left, which means we want to separate that one radical from everything else, so we move everything to the left side, we have x minus 1 minus 25 times x plus 9 minus 16 is equal to 40 times the square root of x plus 9. And then, once we have the, the radical isolated, you go ahead and you square both sides again, and now we get rid of all the radicals. So that's what we call the general approach. Either we could simply separate the radical on one side from the numbers on the other side, simply square it, or all the radicals separated from all the non-radicals, squared, or here we have two radicals, we square both sides, once we have that squared, we recognize we have one radical left, right here, and then of course we separate them again, keep the radical on one side, all the other non-radicals on the other side, square both sides, and that time you get rid of the radical for sure. And that is your general approach. You can see there's some complications here sometimes, and so we'll show you some examples how to, how to actually do that in each case. And that is how we do it, at least in the general approach.